Hey everyone, this is Nick and welcome to this week's edition of the Linux and Open Source News Show. And this week we have NVIDIA making their open source kernel modules the way forward for their recent GPUs instead of the proprietary drivers. We also have a new attack that makes all VPNs basically useless and it does affect Linux, macOS, Windows. The only OS that isn't affected is Android, apparently. And we also have some more news about Cosmic, we have Valve contributing to the NVK drivers and a lot more including this segue to our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Proton Mail. They make a suite of online tools focused on privacy with end-to-end -end and zero access encrypted email, an online storage space, a calendar, a VPN and a password manager. The goal is to offer an all-in-one suite of services that respect your privacy and give you the tools to avoid being tracked in your inbox and by the tools you use every day to get work done. And if you're wondering why that's so important, here is a perfect example. If you use Outlook, you might have seen this screen pop up, informing you that from now on, Microsoft will use and share your data with 801 different partners. And with that data, they can precisely locate you, identify you through fingerprinting, and they can display ads straight inside your inbox, looking like regular email. If you use the new Outlook email app with other email services than Outlook, you will also grant access to all of your data to Microsoft, including the ability to read your emails, and this will all be stored in their cloud. You can create a free Proton account by clicking the link in the description below, and if you ever need more advanced features or more storage space, they have paid plans you can use to up, use Proton Mail, and I can definitely recommend it. So the link is down there. So let's talk about NVIDIA and their drivers. And it looks like NVIDIA is moving towards making their open source modules the default for recent GPUs. So for RTX 2000 series GPUs and up. In the NVIDIA 560 driver series, which is not released yet, they are planning to use their open source kernel modules instead of the proprietary driver. That's not Nuvo, that's not NVK, it's the open source driver NVIDIA develops themselves and that isn't part of the Linux kernel, meaning you will still have to install an additional package or you'll have to run a .run install file from NVIDIA's website. Or alternatively, distros will have to package these modules and decide whether they want to ship them as part of their default install, which shouldn't be that problematic anymore because, well, they're open source you will still be able to pick the proprietary driver instead. But Nvidia said that in the future, chances are some GPUs will only be supported by their open source modules. Now, before you get excited, do note that this is only for the kernel drivers. The user space drivers that handle OpenGL or Vulkan or CUDA, these are still closed source here, as is the generic firmware for these GPUs. Still, it is good progress, and with NVIDIA developers contributing to Nuvo and NVK, it's not entirely unreasonable to think that at some point, on top of these open source kernel modules from NVIDIA, you might be able to just run NVK and have that full open source stack, which would be really cool. We have more news about the Cosmic Desktop. Their developers have now almost finished implementing display mirroring, which apparently also supports cases where the resolution, the orientation, or the refresh rates are different between your displays. System76 is also building ARM64 variants of their packages, and their brand new app store is now completed, apart from some minor UX issues, although it just looks like any other app store. It's apparently really fast though, they say they found it more efficient than using the command line. The file manager gained integration with GNOME's virtual file system to handle all the external file storage. The login manager is now done as well and they've also created a new widget in their libcosmic library to let developers implement context menus. Some fixes were applied to theming as well and a bunch of other issues were dealt with with the compositor, with the screenshot tool, with scrolling and other things. And Cosmic is also getting some attention from the community, even though it's not out yet, with a new GitHub template being created to kickstart the creation of Cosmic apps, and a new web app manager being created as well, 
and in the process of being added to Flathub. An input sources applet was also created to change keyboard layouts and settings from the top panel of Cosmic. So I do hope the alpha is still planned for the end of this month. I booked a video slot to demo what they've accomplished. I'm not expecting it to be as full featured as KDE or not even as GNOME, especially in terms of the default applications, but it does look like they have covered all the basics and it will be interesting to look at a new desktop environment built from scratch with the modern Linux stack in mind instead of carrying around a lot of old legacy code for X11 and stuff that's been here for like decades by now. Now there's a new attack that renders most VPNs completely useless and when I say new I mean it has been found by researchers recently but it potentially could have existed and been used since 2002. The new method called Tunnel Vision lets an attacker read, drop or modify any traffic that tries to go through a VPN, all the while maintaining that connection to the VPN and to the internet, meaning you wouldn't even know that it's happening. It works by running a DHCP server in gateway mode on the same network as the VPN user, and then by using traffic forwarding rules to pass that traffic to a real gateway spying everything that goes through the DHCP server in the meantime. These routes are never encrypted through the VPN in that process. This attack works on any OS apart from Android apparently because it doesn't implement the option which is what is being used in the attacker's DHCP server. On Linux you can minimize the effects of the attack but not entirely prevent it and other operating systems are completely affected. The attacker still needs to have admin privileges over your network, like for example having access to the admin interface of your router, which isn't too hard at least in France because most of the ISP routers are just using admin as a login and a password. Untrusted public networks could also be very easily targeted and this is where you would be most likely to use a VPN. So you would connect to a very basic hotel or airport or cafe Wi-Fi, you would turn on your VPN and feel like everything is safe and secure, but it wouldn't be and you wouldn't even be able to know someone somewhere has a DHCP server that is getting all your traffic and then passing it back to a regular server that then passes it to the VPN and everything looks encrypted. It's a man in the middle attack basically. Now open source is really cool because everyone can contribute but sometimes it also means we reach peak stupidity because some Pokemon Go players are apparently modifying real OpenStreetMap data to add beaches where these don't exist in real life because this will net them increased chances of catching some rare Pokemon in their game. Now since Pokemon Go uses real map data from OSM to make their virtual creatures available in their app and to pinpoint certain points of interest that let you refill your Pokeballs and stuff like that, some players just thought it would be acceptable to just change the real map. The worst thing is that Pokemon Go might not even update their OpenStreetMap data regularly or at all, meaning that first, these modifications aren't even guaranteed to help people catch these Pokemon in their game, and second, they're actually modifying real mapping data, something that is used by actual useful applications and programs all across the world. Sometimes the griefers even draw their own pseudonym on the map. And it also seems that some anti-Pokemon Go people are now removing real points of interest just because they are used in-game to give certain game advantages to Pokemon Go players. Obviously, do not change real map data just to fit a game that might not even pull that data for five months. It's stupid. This is real data that has been contributed over the years by a dedicated community. Do not do that. But also, apparently, since Pokemon Go moved to OSM in 2017, I think, a lot of people started implementing more data into OSM because they wanted their CD to have the points of interest that could be used in-game, and so the quality of the data in OSM has improved thanks to an influx of Pokemon Go contributors, which, I mean, that's okay, doesn't give you the excuse to actually destroy the real map, though. Now it looks like Valve is taking an interest in the NVK open source Vulkan drivers for NVIDIA. 
they've been working on bringing explicit sync to these drivers. This is a feature that is needed to get better performance, less latency, and less graphical glitches on NVIDIA. It's something that both GNOME and KDE are working on as well to make sure that they can support it once the drivers actually have that feature. So now, thanks to Valve, the NVK driver will support that. And the game scope compositor that Valve uses in SteamOS will also be able to make use of that. The Nuvo kernel driver also received updates to support the feature, so it will definitely make NVK a more viable option in the near future. But what is really interesting here is that it's Valve contributing to an NVIDIA driver, because Valve generally just uses AMD stuff. Their Steam Deck and SteamOS is, for now, only rated to run on an AMD APU. So them contributing to some NVIDIA code might mean they're getting ready to either open up SteamOS to more computers or to maybe start onboarding partners that might want to ship NVIDIA GPUs in their devices that could run SteamOS. We're not there yet, but them contributing to NVIDIA-only stuff? It's cool, maybe they were just waiting for an open source driver to not have any licensing problems and legal issues by having to ship an NVIDIA proprietary driver. And let's finish this with the gaming news. First, we have SteamOS 3.6. It's now in preview and it updates the entire Arch base of the distribution with the kernel 6.5, the latest Mesa 24.1, and so basically improved performance overall. In terms of SteamOS specific features, they apparently improved how the display looks on the Steam Deck with better color balance and better gamma uniformity. The Steam UI should also be more responsive, which is an issue I've had on my Steam Deck where things are not stuttery, but they're not that smooth either. But the desktop mode of SteamOS is still stuck to KD 5.27. It doesn't get Plasma 6 for now. The BIOS was also updated for the Steam Deck, bringing overclocking controls to the Steam Deck LCD. There are a bunch of other interesting changes as well. First, pairing with AirPods is improved. You can now wake the device using a controller, meaning it should now behave like a proper console, where you can turn on the controller and start playing, instead of having to turn on the device manually. And the Steam Deck dock also supports TV remote input, TV wake up, and TV input switching over HDMI. So technically, you could just put your Steam Deck to sleep in its deck dock, you turn off your TV, and when you turn on the controller, it wakes up the Steam Deck, it wakes up the TV, and it works just like any gaming console, which is cool. I'll make sure to give that preview a shot just to see how well it works, and if it does work, maybe I'll try using SteamOS or Holo ISO again on my Steam gaming console, because that was an issue I had where I just had to get off my lazy ass and turn on the thing with the button, it wasn't in a convenient location, it just wasn't practical. Turning it on with a controller, much better. And we also have a few more details about Playtron OS, the Linux-based gaming OS that the Playtron company wants to bring to a few handhelds and other devices. They have big plans for this. They want to push it to TVs, to PCs, to handhelds and more. And they actually received some sizable investment. So now we know that the OS will let you play games from Steam, Epic Games, GOG and more. And they say it has improved game compatibility compared to other systems. I guess because it will let you use things like the Heroic Launcher or another implementation of the legendary API to connect to the Epic Game Store more easily than on SteamOS. They said the pre-launch will be in 2024 and many devices are planned for 2025, although only one has been announced for now. Playtron OS is apparently based on Fedora Silverblue 40 and they also said they tested things on the Steam Deck, the Deluxe the Lenovo Legion Go, the GPD Win 4, or the ROG Ally. They also said that they were backed by a handful of crypto companies, which is never a good sign for any product. And they also said that only the core OS code would be open source. So probably their entire gaming interface and compatibility with other launchers will not be open source. Although that's also not the case with SteamOS. The the interface and the Steam client are not open source either, so I don't think that's such a giant issue. I'm always up for these kinds of projects that try to push Linux-based systems to mass market or at least consumer-based devices, but the crypto stuff always smells fishy, and until they've actually shown the system running on some actual hardware and until they announce some partnerships, some real physical stuff, I will treat it as vaporware.
What isn't vaporware though is our sponsor, Tuxedo Computers. They make computers that are definitely real and that ship with Linux pre-installed. You can buy them using the link in the description below. They have a big range of devices from small ultrabooks for office work all the way up to gaming laptops, giant workstations, giant gaming towers, and everything in between. All their computers are very customizable. You can open the laptops, you can repair them and upgrade them. You can have your own custom keyboard layout. They are really, really good. And you're guaranteed to have really good Linux support because that's what they do. They make computers with Linux. I only use Tuxedo computers these days. My entire channel runs on one of their laptops and all my gaming needs are served by one of their desktops. So if you want to check them out, the link is in the description below. I can only recommend them. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, all the usual YouTube buttons are down there. Like, comment, subscribe, notifications, whatever. You know how things work. And if you really like the channel, there are links in the description to support it financially. If you become a Patreon member or YouTube member, you will get access to a daily version of this show. So thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.